Hi everyone, I'm Marlene Moore. Welcome to book 10 of the Back to Basics piano program. Uh, we are on video number 29 today, so this should be exciting. This will be the first half of book 10. By the way, I've had a number of people ask me about my jewelry. Thank you for inquiring about my jewelry. Uh, yes, I make all of my own jewelry. And yes, I make jewelry for other people. So if you're interested in jewelry, please uh, send me a message on Facebook. I'd be only too happy to talk with you about it. I've created lots of jewelry. It's called Marlene's Creations. Anyway, more of Marlene's Creations today. Uh, today I'm going to try to get through the first half of book 10, hopefully. I can't play all of the pieces because I'm really only allowed about um, four minutes per piece. And uh, some of them take up longer than four minutes because uh, some of them are quite advanced. Uh, this book is, for, is advanced, but it's not the most advanced music because Back to Basics is primarily written for average students. If you have a student who is above average, who is extremely talented, you will have to supplement their uh, piano pieces with other more difficult pieces. Uh, these ones are chosen uh, for the average student. It may be too hard for some of them, but you'll have to judge that for yourself. Uh, we did do the first two in the book, uh, and I'm going to continue on now with Sonatina. This is in C major. It's four pages. And we'll do a little bit of this one. And then it goes on to section two, and there are repeats. Um, I think that will go just that far. If you can look at your book, uh, one, two, third line down, first measure, we have an F, and then we have another F. That F is in the incorrect place. I don't know why, but it is. It should be. And it was written like this in this uh, copy for some reason or other. I do believe that's incorrect. So you can change that to, uh, to go with the A. So we've got an F in the left hand, an A in the right hand. One a half, a two a half, a three a half, a four a half. Let me play that again. Okay, it's on the second eighth note in the left hand. One half a, two a half a, three a half a, four a half a. Alrighty, that's a mistake. Please fix that. Um, it will be um, edited and fixed into the next copy. We can't expect perfection the first or second time. Sometimes we have to rewrite things even in the third edition, and that's where they're going very soon, is into the third edition. Watch the fingering in this piece. Very, very important. Teach it in steps, hand separately, with correct fingering. This is Baroque fingering, and it is very tricky. Also, um, the expression is so uh, much, it, it, it's so important. I'm not sure if Clementi did this for the harpsichord or the piano, but 
the louds and softs and slow downs, the retardandos, they're very, very important. Expression and the dynamics, so, so, so important. Um, if we go over to, if you look in your books, page 10, we've got dominant seventh chords down there. Your students at this point should really, really, really know their technique. Scales, chords, arpeggios, four note forms, dominant and diminished sevenths, and everything else. Again, the brown book. Please have the brown book. Please teach out of that brown book. So, so, so important. I'm not sure what Mr. Bergmuller called the number of this study that is next, but um, I'm calling it flying. Flying. Because the fingers are flying. And uh, it's written in 6-8 times, which is always a challenge, too. And um, it's in C major. There are three pages. Probably best to memorize this one. I had to memorize most of it, even though I'm looking at some of it. Okay, here we go. Let's see how far I can go. <laughs> lovely piece. I missed a few spots, but I only memorized it yesterday, so uh, that's probably forgivable. Um, so many dynamics in this. This is a, a romantic piece. It's a piece where you put your whole heart and soul into, even though it's called a study. All right, make those fingers fly. Um, I, I have always taught this piece by rote to the auditory students because they have a hard time sight reading it. Uh, it's up to you. Um, those arpeggios are probably proof positive of whether or not you have studied enough for your arpeggios, arpeggios to get that wrist moving. Okay, uh, Prelude in C minor by Chopin, our favorite piano composer, C minor, and uh, I, I don't think I'll play it all because most of you would know this or have heard it. Um, I think I'll just do a little bit of it, but we'll talk about it afterwards. Starts off loud.
softer with the pedal. And so on. And when you get to that final third line, very, very soft, use the soft pedal for that. It's a repeat. Very, very soft. Soft as you can. Gradually increase the crescendo as you get into the next little part and then very very quiet again at the end. We need to know our four note forms for this. We need to know them inside out. Four note forms are triad with the hat on the end. Your expression is everything in this prelude to Chopin. It's everything. It's not just important. It's everything. Chopin's music without passion or without expression, without dynamics, is nothing. That's why some people can play Chopin so well and other people cannot. Um, the old saying, it, it, anyone can play, learn how to play the piano, but it takes a real musician to play Chopin. I believe that's true. I really do believe that's true. Um, in addition to expression, do we see that note? I don't know if you've ever been told this or not, where we're going... Like... Right here. be able to reach that but if you're a female you want to put I'm going from top to bottom E flat C G E flat and now there's a D you couldn't possibly play it with your left hand because your left hand is playing down here right but we want to hear that Chopin wants us to hear that D flat so flatten out your thumb and play the D flat and the uh, E flat on the flat of your thumb them together so you get the full effect of that one I was not taught that when I learned this uh, when I was a girl and later on I learned that little secret that I'll pass that on to you okay at the dancing school uh, this moves from C major to C minor we've got an awful lot of time signature changes here uh, I'm not going to play all of it, but um, if you like, you can just uh, go to my YouTube channel. You're on it now. Go to the YouTube channel and look for the piece called At the Dancing School, and you'll be able to hear the whole thing. I'm playing it, and you won't be able to see me, but I am playing that correctly. Uh, I haven't played this one for years, but I did go over it yesterday, and we'll see what I can do. C minor first. about one uh, quarter of the piece. If you look into um, the t the time signature changes, we go from 4-8 to 5-8 to 4-8 to 3-8 to 4-8. It's almost impossible to count this. It gets really uh, bog bogged down if you get too logical. However, have your students listen to it. Listen to it on my YouTube channel a lot. Have, let them know what YouTube channel that is. Show them. And they can listen to it over and over again. And what happens here is it goes into C major then. 
and then the chords are in C major. So, and then it goes back into minor and major again. It's a, sort of a Mozartian piece, Mozartian. Um, I wrote this a long time ago, and um, I think I was enchanted with Mozart. Performance is everything for this piece, too. Uh, it makes a good recital piece, either for the teacher or for the more advanced student. All right, this takes us up to um, By the Limpid Stream, uh, Mr. Bergmuller again, and we're in G major. <laughs> I hope you love scales too. They are the basis of everything you do in classical piano. Just absolutely the basis, the foundation. It's like having a good foundation under your house. You need a good foundation of scales, chords, arpeggios, triads, uh, four note forms. Here I go with my preaching about technique. Technique is where it's at. What have we got here? Okay, we've got the thumb is the star. The thumb. Accent that thumb. They're not marked, but that's how this works. It's, it's supposed to be a murmuring sound uh, by the limpid stream. Mr. Bergmuller wants us to think murmuring, um, murmuring stream. So let's do that. Let's get the thumb going. Thumb. Five two thumb five two all over. And the magic happens when you put the left hand in it. The left hand is all the same. G D G D G. Listen. not. Think of only your thumb and you'll get this. Think of just thumb. 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 Just thumb. And then it changes into the uh, secondary part. The second section after that first one repeats. pattern and then it goes back and repeats uh, it's uh, up to here and so on isn't it beautiful uh, I believe it's just a study too that Mr. Bergmuller did that turns into a beautiful piece if you get the expression correct. Uh, C major, seagulls. Oh my goodness, this takes me back to a long time ago. I had this uh, piece appraised by a, a composer one time years ago when I was very young. And uh, if, if you look at the notation very closely on your book, you'll see that the notation is actually in the shape of seagulls. You know the formation that they make when they're flying? She said to me, this isn't a good title for this. It should be something more pastoral that is in the prairies. Well, I haven't spent much time in the prairies in my lifetime, but I've spent a lot of time near the ocean. And to me, it's seagulls. It's even the formation there. And look at my hands when I'm doing it. Look at the formation, how the seagulls go.
stop there. That's probably enough. This is five pages long, so it's quite um, involved. But I've played the major part for you. Again, um, since this is one of my pieces, uh, you can listen to the whole thing on YouTube channel and have your students do that too. Uh, this is a mood piece. It's moody. A lyrical quality that requires a lot of listening. A lot of listening. Not just once. Don't just have them hear it once. Uh, listen to it on my YouTube channel. Play it for them after you have learned it really well. You play it for your students over and over and over again. Let that get into their brain. Uh, it's not a hard piece. It's, um, again, the expression is everything. Absolutely everything. Did you notice I got new glasses? These are working much, much better. Plus, I couldn't see right, so I took my... Uh, you know, most of you know I'm an artist, too. I took my easel... I put my easel up here, and then I put this board that I use for composing music, and I put that on top, put my light in behind, and hey, I can see better. Isn't that neat? <laughs> we have to invent sometimes to get it right. I was having an awful time with my other glasses, but uh, these ones are working fine. Okay, let's check our time. I'm having fun today. I hope you are, too. Oh, we've got time to do this one. That's good. This is probably my favorite piece in the repertoire of classical music. I just love Stephen Heller. And this one is done in D minor. Um, I, I won't play all of it, but I'll play the... You've probably played this when you, when you were younger, but... Um, if not, here it is. It's so fun and so passionate. diminished sevenths and four note forms and you like drama and passionate pieces this piece is for you this piece is the recital piece for your student who has great technique in big chunky things that are uh, four note forms and diminished sevenths great fun so we're, we're counting on the third beat one two three is very very important the rhythm needs to be correct with this one isn't that an amazing piece I've only played you a little bit of it too it is four pages long very exciting very very exciting and I think we're going to end today just check the old time we're going to end today with my Bass River Rag which is um, great fun to play you know, they don't always have to have classical pieces. Sometimes they just like to have a ragtime piece. Um, my arm can no longer, my left arm, I have a very, very bad shoulder, as you probably know. My left arm can no longer get up to here, so I'm going to play mine starting here. I'll go as far as I can. Ready? <laughs>
one is just pure joy. It's pure fun. Um, I recorded this years and years ago when I lived in Halifax, uh, Canada, for a year. I lived there for a year, and I recorded it. And it's a good recording. Um, and I use that recording to put onto YouTube. So I hope that you will listen to it. It's three pages long. Let your students listen to it, because this is a tricky piece. Very, very tricky piece. Um, when we come back next time, we're going to deal with Moonlight Sonata, which most, most of you know. And uh, my little piece called Little Girl. It's not that little, it's kind of a long piece. Fantasy Impromptu. And um, Sonata in C Major by Mozart. Well, we've done most of book 10 today. I did more than I thought we, we could. That was fun. It was fun for me. I hope it was fun for you too. I hope you're practicing all of the pieces in book 10 and that they're getting better and better. Don't forget before you get to book 10, if you're not used to this level of music uh, or if it's been a while since you played this level, go back and do the other, other books first. If you have questions, please ask me either on YouTube or in the Facebook group that is called uh, Back to Basics Piano Teacher Training Program. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye for now.